I'm going to demonstrate a spreadsheet model for calculating confidence intervals for the mean. And uh, confidence intervals are used to estimate a range within which some population parameter is likely to lie. Uh, they can be calculated for pretty much any population parameter, but they're most commonly used to calculate intervals for uh, population means and uh, proportions. All right, so for this example, I have sort of contrived a population with about 500 values. So uh, whatever the population might be, uh, it has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, and to make writing some of the formulas easier, uh, I've named a few cells. All right, you can download this spreadsheet by clicking on the link in the video and uh, follow along or uh, use it after you watch the video. All right, so there's two methodologies for uh, calculating a confidence interval for a mean. And uh, there's uh, the situation where we know or we think we know the population standard deviation. Okay, and when we do, we can use the standard normal curve uh, to to get the uh, part of the interval, okay? All right, so I have the uh, formula for a confidence interval over here with a known uh, standard deviation, and you need uh, four uh, values to, to calculate the interval. You need the uh, sample mean, all right? You need a Z alpha half, all right? That is how far away in standard deviations you need to move to have a certain level of confidence and uh, you need the standard error. Okay, all right, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, pick a random sample out of that population. I'm going to do that using a combination of this index function, which picks off a row and optionally a column. All right, and uh, I'm going to pick it out of that named cell. I named it population. Okay. And to get the row, I'm going to use the rand between function. All right, so this will ensure that I am picking and following the rules for choosing a simple random sample where uh, every observation is going to have an equal chance of being chosen. All right, and uh, the probability of being chosen is remaining constant. So, in, in other words, uh, there's a, some chance that we'll see the same observation chosen twice in a sample. Okay. All right, so our first sample point is, uh, is 105.47. Uh, All right, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that formula down to get a sample of about 30 here. Okay. All right, and so uh, to get uh, the, the sample size, I'm going to use the count function. And to get the sample mean, just use the average function. Okay, so for this sample, we see we have a mean of uh, just over 104. And, uh, you know, I should note that every time I do a calculation in the spreadsheet, you're going to see these values jump around. Okay, and it's because the formula I used, this ran between function, is a volatile function that uh, randomly chooses a new observation uh, every time the spreadsheet recalculates. Okay. All right, so this is going to just allow us to uh, generate a, a bunch of uh, confidence intervals if, if we want to, all right? And, and I'm just doing that for, uh, for this demonstration, okay? All right, so uh, we have our sample mean. We see it changed again, all right? We have our population standard deviation, all right? And then the fourth thing that we need, the fourth value, I mentioned we needed four, I told you three. The fourth thing you need is a confidence level. All right, and if you're estimating an interval within which uh, the, uh, the population mean is supposed to lie, you'd like to be 100% confident, 100% sure it's there, but, you know, nothing is certain, so we have to settle for pretty certain. And 
Uh, for now, I'm going to say that's 95%. Okay. The, uh, the complement of the confidence level is this level of significance. All right, and it's also known as alpha, and it's just one minus the confidence level. All right, so the level of significance is five percent. The alpha is five percent. Uh, it also happens to be the probability that the interval we calculate will not contain the population mean. Okay, all right. So to get the margin of error, all right, there's a there's a few ways we can do it. Um, we could calculate the components separately and then combine them. All right, so I get the z alpha half, and I, I can get the uh, standard error and then and then multiply them together. All right, so I could use a, a function like the uh, norms inverse. All right, which asks for a probability, and this is the probability in the uh, left tail. So. Um, for a 95% confidence interval, that's 0.975. And if you've uh, been doing statistics a little bit, if you've seen this already, uh, you'll see that value is pretty similar to one that you can look up in the table. All right, so the, the ones in the table will say 1.96 uh, without splitting hairs. I guess that's pretty close to uh, 1.96. All right, so that's one way of doing it. And then I could take the 15 divide it by the square root of 30 and combine them together to get a margin of error. All right, I'm going to do it a little bit uh, uh, more succinctly. I'm going to use this confidence norm function, which does all that for me. All right, so uh, it asks for three arguments. All right, it wants the alpha. There it is. It wants the standard deviation. All right, I can either uh, tell it E7 or I named a cell standard deviation earlier so I'm going to use that and then it wants the sample size which is in E4 okay so the margin of error for this 95% uh, confidence interval all right is uh, 5.368 okay and then to get the confidence interval I'm just going to take the margin of error and add and subtract it uh, from uh, from the the point estimate of the of the mean. All right, so I'll take this 98.28, subtract away the margin of error, and I will take the new sample mean since I recalculated things and uh, add to it the the margin of error. Okay. All right, so uh, we can see that the first interval is uh, extending from 97.59 to 108.33, and uh, we can also see that it does, in fact, contain the population mean, which we know is 100 in this case. All right, uh, I can force this to recalculate and get a, another interval. All right, so here I go. All right, I got a new sample. All right, I got a new interval. All right, and once again, the interval contains the population mean. All right, so that 95% confidence level is looking uh, to work out pretty well. All right, so I can just tell you right away that I can do that many, many times, and almost all the intervals are going to contain the population mean. All right, so I also want to point out here that the only thing that's changing as we calculate new intervals is the the point estimate of the mean all right the margin of error is constant all right because well the sample size is constant and the population standard deviation isn't changing either all right so as we go through this uh, the only thing you'll see bouncing around is uh, these three values down at the bottom okay all right so I want to compare that with the situation where we don't know the standard deviation and uh, we have to estimate that from the sample we take. All right, and so that I can directly compare the intervals, I'm going to tie uh, this sample to the sample on the other sheet. Okay, so that we have exactly the same uh, mean. All right, the, the things that are going to change are the standard deviation, which is now being calculated from the sample. Okay, and then uh, the margin of error will also change uh, based on the uh, standard deviation. Okay, 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate the standard deviation from the sample. All right, and so we can see for this sample, the uh, standard deviation I get is a little bit bigger than the, uh, the one in the population. All right, so uh, extending that out just a little bit, we can assume that the interval we get is also going to be somewhat wider. Okay, and you know, the procedure we're using, uh, the student's T test or the student's T table, all right, is actually a family of distributions. And it also takes into account that we're estimating the standard deviation. All right, and so when we're estimating it, it means we're a little less sure of it. And so uh, you might expect that the interval would be just a little bit wider anyway, uh, because, well, the T alpha half should be bigger than a Z alpha half. And uh, let's see what a T alpha half looks like, all right, for a sample size of 30. All right, and so this takes two inputs because, as I mentioned, the T distribution is actually a family of distributions and it depends on the sample size. All right, so the probability again is going to be upper, uh, sorry, the left tail. All right, so I'm going to say everything except for the last two and a half percent. All right, this degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one because uh, we're estimating uh, the standard deviation. Okay. All right. So for a uh, a z-based or a known uh, standard deviation uh, confidence interval, we used 1.96. All right. And for a t-based, where we're estimating the standard deviation, we're going to use a, a a t alpha half of 2.05. So just a little bit bigger than the uh, than the uh, the z alpha half. All right. All right, and that's going to remain constant. The 2.05 is going to remain constant. The thing that's going to change is the standard deviation, and so the, the margin of error will bounce around on a, on a, a, a t-based confidence interval. Okay. All right, and so, yes, I'm going to use this confidence t function instead of uh, calculating the components separately. Uh, it wants the same inputs. and sample size. All right, so I filled in the formulas down here and you know actually we got pretty lucky on this first sample because the standard deviation is almost exactly uh, 15. All right, so our interval is uh, going to be almost exactly the same. All right, so we have a margin of error of 5.6 on the uh, the known situation, uh, it's, it's a little bit smaller, 5.36. So we can see that when the standard deviations are pretty much equal, all right, that's pretty much equal to 15, uh, the margin of error uh, is bigger when we don't know the standard deviation. That's based on that T alpha half being bigger. Okay, we can see that still, as I go ahead and generate a few of these, okay, most of the time, all right, the interval's a little bit wider, but most of the time it is still capturing uh, the population mean. All right, so let me talk for just a couple of minutes about what we mean by being 95% confident, okay? So uh, on this sheet, what I did was I uh, went ahead and uh, picked 10 random samples, so following the same procedure I did earlier, I picked 10 random samples, and then uh, I'm going to calculate the confidence intervals uh, for, for each of those 10 samples. All right, so I did it for the first one, and uh, then I wrote a formula over here that uh, kind of looks at the upper and lower confidence levels and, and uh, evaluates whether or not uh, the population mean falls within that range. Okay, all right, so then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down, and I'll have side by side here 10 different confidence intervals. All right, and uh, yeah, the first time I do this, we can see that, oh, okay, all of the intervals, uh, all the intervals contain uh, the population mean. That's nice, all right. So these were based on this alpha of 0.2. 
All right, so an alpha of 0.2 is uh, the same thing as saying an 80% confidence interval. And if I generate a new sample here, we can see that, oh, as I'm going along here, uh, we see uh, a bunch of falses popping up there. All right, and so uh, I'm using this to try to explain uh, what we mean when we say uh, 80% confident in this case. And what we mean by that is that on average, if we repeat this procedure over and over again, 80% uh, of our intervals are actually going to contain the population mean. Okay, so uh, you know, for some settings that may be good enough. You may be okay with a 20% chance of, of being wrong that your interval does not contain the population mean. Uh, in most settings, we want to be a little bit more sure of ourselves than that and so uh, we set this alpha uh, pretty low and uh, the trade-off between getting an interval that's too wide and uh, and, uh, and and being uh, more confident is is generally around 0 0.05 okay all right, so what we're saying here is that 95% of the intervals we calculate will contain the population mean. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens if uh, maybe you don't think that's good enough. Uh, maybe you want to be uh, more confident. Uh, so let's see what happens to our interval when I set the alpha at 0 0.01. Uh, right now, uh, you know, when the, when the uh, sample mean is pretty close to 100, uh, the interval uh, is just about 11 wide, all right? And uh, when I set the alpha 0 0.01 and recalculate the interval, uh, we can see that while it widens out quite a bit, it goes, uh, it goes from being about 11 wide, a little less than 11, to being more than 14 wide, okay? All right, so there's kind of a trade-off between uh, uh, precision and confidence, all right? To get more confidence, we lose precision, all right? To get more precision, uh, we have to uh, lose confidence, all right? So to, to set this back to uh, an 80% confidence interval, uh, yeah, it's pretty narrow, all right? So here it's only about seven wide, okay? And uh, what we see happening, though, is that, okay, uh, many fewer of the intervals actually contain the population mean, all right? All right, so that's why generally you see uh, people calculating 95% uh, confidence intervals. All right, so I hope that helps with uh, confidence intervals of the mean.